In this video, we're going to tackle four logarithmic equations that are a little bit more challenging. So if you want a, a challenge, go ahead and see if you can do these on your own. We'll go through them together and I'll point out some little tips and techniques along the way. So for this first example, what do you think you would do here to solve for x? Well, we can see we've got log base 16 of the fourth root of 8. And the main thing to remember here is how do you switch before between the logarithmic form and the exponential form. And just a, a refresher here, what you can do is you can exponentiate or raise both sides using that same base 16. Because remember, exponential functions and logarithmic functions are inverses of each other if the bases are the same. So what happens in essence is that these are undoing one another and we're left with 16 to the x power equals the fourth root of 8. Now when I look at 16 and 8, I can see that I could rewrite these using a common base of 2. And so what we're going to do here is 16 is actually like 2 to the 4th power, 8 is 2 to the 3rd power, and then this is the 4th root. So here we're talking about rational exponents. Remember, uh, rational exponents, this index or root goes in the denominator, and the numerator, the exponent, is the power. So you can see 2 cubed is 8, and then we've got the 4th root of that. Now remember, when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, or we call it a power to a power, you multiply those exponents together. And then now look what we have. We have the one-to-one -one property of exponents. We have the same base, so we can set those exponents equal to each other and solve. So we have 3 fourths equals 4x. Four Let's just go ahead and multiply both sides by 1 fourth. And that comes out to x is equal to 3 sixteenths. With logarithmic equations, you always want to go back and just quickly check to make sure that you know, you're not taking the log uh, of a zero or a negative quantity, but that, that's not the case here. So let's look at number two now. So here, this is kind of interesting because we have like a log inside of another log, right? So how would you solve that one? Well, if I was going to do it, I would do very similar to this first problem where I'm going to exponentiate or raise both sides or rewrite this in the exponential form, however you want to think about that. These are inverses of one another, just like squaring and square rooting or adding and subtracting, multiplying, dividing. And so you can see we're left with 2 to the negative 1, which remember when you have a negative exponent, that tells us to take the reciprocal. Okay, so now we just have one log here, but again, we're still trying to get that variable by itself. Let's do this one more time. Let's exponentiate both sides using base 4. These are inverses. They undo one another. And we have x is equal to 4 to the 1 half power. But remember, the 1 half power is the same as the square root, right? Because this denominator, that's our index. So this is like the square root of 4 to the first power. The square root of 4 is 2. And that's our final result. Again, you want to check to make sure you're not taking the log of 0 or a negative quantity. And in this case, we're not. So this is a good answer. Let's take a look at two more examples. Okay, let's take a look at uh, number 3 now. So we've got 5 raised to the log base 25 of 9 minus 6 raised to the log base 36 of 4 equals x. How would you solve for x in this problem? Well, this is a challenging one, but notice that we've got 25 and 5. That seems to be very interesting. And we've got 36 and 6. That seems to be very interesting. Let's do a little bit of rewriting here. Uh, 5, we can write that as 25 to the 1 half power, right? Because the 1 half power is like the square root, and the square root of 25 is 5. So we're not changing the problem. We're just kind of rewriting it, putting it into a different format. Now over here, 36 to the 1 half power is the same thing as 6, because the square root of 36 is 6. And you're probably saying, well, why are we doing that? And you'll see in just a moment here, we're trying to get these bases to be the same. But now let's take a look at this. Power to a power, what do we do? We multiply the exponents. So that's going to look like 25 uh, to the 1 half times log base 25 of 9 minus 36 to the 1 half times log base 36 of 4. Okay, now let's take a look at the power property of log. So whatever is in front here, you can bring it up as a power. Same thing here. Whatever is in front, we're going to bring up as a power. So now when I think of 9 to the 1 half power, again, that 1 half power is the square root. So that's saying like the square root of 9, which is 3. So this comes out to 25 log base 25 of 3 minus 36 log base 36 of the square root of 4, which is 2. 
Okay, so now look what we have. We have an exponential function. We have a logarithmic function. The bases are the same. These are inverses. They undo one another. That leaves us with three, right? Over here, same thing. We have 36 raised to the log base 36. These are inverses, and we just get two. And three minus two, of course, is one. And we solved it. Let's take a look at number four now. So for number four, you can see we've got some natural logs here in this problem. How would you do this one? Well, again, we're going to want to try to rewrite this a little bit. And so what I would do is I would take this uh, coefficient, bring it up as a power. That's the power property of logs or natural logs. And so if we do that, this looks like x equals 4 to the natural log of, now c squared of e is the 1 half, right? So 1 half. But then we're bringing up this power like that. Okay, so now we've got uh, power to power we're going to multiply. Well, let's simplify this a little bit further here. So this one, we have natural log, which remember natural log is base e, log base e of e cubed. These are inverses of one another because the bases are the same, and we just get 3 here. So this is really like 3 to the third power. Here we have 4 to the natural log of e to the 5 halves power. Of course, remember natural log is log base e. And you can see that these are inverses of one another, leaving us with 4 to the 5 halves power plus 3 cubed, which is 3 times 3 times 3, 3 times, right? And then this is saying, what's the square root of 4? That's 2. What's 2 to the 5th power? That's 32. And now we just have 32 plus 27, which is 59. And we solved it. So great job if you're able to follow these four more challenging logarithmic equation problems. If you want to learn more about logarithms, I've got a complete guide right there. Follow me over to that video. We'll go through all the properties of logs, expanding, condensing logs, solving logarithmic equations, and more. I'll see you over in that video.